Hello everyone, this is Mary Ann and welcome back to my channel. In a previous video, I showed you this notebook. It's the Midori MD A5 notebook with a cream or ivory colored blank pages inside. And I said in that video, which I will link down below, I said there that I was not really sure what I was going to use the notebook for. But I do want to use it someday because it's so pretty and it was it will be such a waste if I don't use something this beautiful. So finally, now I have found a use for it and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I have decided to use the notebook as a bound journal. But because the pages are blank, I decided to make these templates from A4, A5 size paper. And you can see there that there is an area that is boxed off that is the exact same size as personal sized Filofax pages that is 95 millimeters wide and 171 millimeters tall. And even the margins are mirrored um, because I wanted to be able to use my same size paper that I use for my archives. And these are the archives that I have recently taken out of storage because I have to put um, identifying tabs on them. There you can see that I have temporarily placed a post-it to let me know what month and year those archives are for. And these are the size of the pages that I use for both my planner and my journal and also my ephemera and notes and other things. It just works so well for me and I didn't really want to make any major change in my system. So I want to stick to that particular paper size, which is why I have decided that I am going to use the Midori MD A5 notebook, but just to write on the area that corresponds exactly to the personal sized file effects pages. And again, I have decided to mirror the margins because that's the area where the hole punch is going to go. But once I cut down all of the pages, when I'm done writing on them while in the bound notebook, they're all going to fit in together. So I am going to take out this notebook. Finally, I'll take it out of the packaging for good. I took out the uh, wrapping that translucent semi-transparent paper and the, the little sleeve and the sticker paper that went with it which you all saw in the previous video about this particular notebook and then I broke open finally the notebook and then I, I just placed the templates underneath the page. The page is not very, very thin. It's not as thin as the Tomoe River paper, but um, it's translucent or transparent enough for me to see what's underneath. I honestly didn't know how to proceed after that. I didn't really know how to mark the personal sized area on the A5 page. So I just use the pencil and then at first I tried to trace that exact outline on the page because the idea was to use this bound notebook as a bound journal and write in it while it is still bound so that I can carry it like a bound book which I really really miss doing and which when I was doing it years ago I really really enjoyed so I grabbed this opportunity to be able to do it again so that's why I wanted to uh, mark an area in which I must contain my writing so that when all of the pages are filled in I can tear apart the notebook and then cut the pages down to personal sized sheets, hole punch them and then put them in the archives that I showed you earlier in this same video. So there's just me uh, drawing lines and I extend the, the lines to the edges of the page because I'm going to be using a manual paper trimmer for this. I'm going to cut this down um, by hand so I needed crop marks that would um, extend to the edge of the page because that's where I'm that's going to be my marker uh, that will allow me to see whether I'm I'm properly aligning the the page I want to cut down to the groove in the paper trimmer 
But in the end, I decided that it, it looked too much. It did not really look nice. And I didn't want to be erasing the lines from every single page. I know I'm going to be cutting down that entire line anyway, but it just didn't look very nice to me. And then I realized that I didn't really need a line to go around the entire page area that I, I am targeting. I really only need the crop marks that will help me out in trimming the paper down. So I just marked enough on the page to create legitimate crop marks the way they look like in InDesign whenever I print out a project on paper with crop marks. These are actually how the crop marks look like. They are just very thin short lines that go to the edge of the page but do not quite reach the uh, area of the project so that even if there are certain um, variations or margins of error in the cutter even if you're going to cut it manually or using an industrial cutter um, no crop mark will be left remaining on the corner of the project so that's what I did I just imitated the style of the crop marks on InDesign and then I proceeded to do that to all of the pages I did try to create the ruling on the page following the template but I kept doing it all wrong it kept turning out um, you know crooked one end is higher than the other and it was really too much work that I didn't want to do it putting in the crop marks was very easy uh, but doing the lines and having them you know um, perfectly parallel to each other wasn't something that I could do manually so I really just erased that and didn't put the rulings on the pages anymore. So in the end this is what the crop marks on the page look like. They're on all the four corners and I put them only on the front side of each page because I didn't really need a crop mark on both sides of the paper because I only need a guide for one side of the page. And with the template underneath the page it's still very clear. I can still very clearly see the lines that I have to follow when I am writing down my journal entry. And I have a different template for the left page and a different template for the right page because the placement and size of the margins are important to me um, because I wanted to have that mirror margins because that's where the whole punching will go. And finally, because I am now using a bound A5 notebook, I finally have a reason to go ahead and purchase a cover for it. And I have always admired the Hobonichi covers. I have been watching people's haul videos and setup videos of their Hobonichis for a very long time. And usually people post their hauls right around September because the Hobonichi store usually opens on the 1st of September every year. Um, the store isn't open yet. It's only the 31st of August while I'm editing this video. But I got this from the 2017 store. Um... I didn't know that we, we could still purchase from that store. I only tried because I didn't want to wait. But I wasn't really sure that this, the, the purchase was going to push through. But amazingly, it did. And then after a day, I got a shipping notice with a tracking number for EMS. And then after another four days, I got the package delivered right to my address. I didn't need to go to the post office to claim it, which is usually the standard um, uh, process for Philippine parcels. Uh, so this would be the box. As you can see, it's still the pink one with a green print on it and it says Hobonichi Techo 2017 because it's from the 2017 store. And there really wasn't much items available anymore from the 2017 store, which is understandable. Um, most of the items there are already out of stock and no restocks are being planned. And 
I did see this particular cover last year and I thought that it was a very very nice color um, it is the Caribbean and this is actually showing up a lot brighter on screen in real life it's just a little bit darker and it has slightly more green to it and that's what I bought and I also purchased a cover on cover and there's nothing else in the box so that's all that's in this big pink box and I chose this particular color of the cover because the blue reminds me of the diamine Eau de Nil fountain pen ink that I used for my One Book July project in 2016 and I really liked that color. Um, I don't use that color for my fountain pens anymore although I still use it but of course now I have reason to use it again in this journal and I do like the combination of the warm brown and the that sort of like Eau de Nil blue color. I like the combination of the warm brown and the cool blue. Most people don't really like dark and dark colors together but I think that even though these colors are both dark I think they provide ample contrast um, with each other so I really like it and the quality is really really very good. Now I, I can understand the hype that goes with the Hobonichi and now I can finally join all of the many many people who gush about the Hobonichi like every year and this is just the ordinary cover on cover um, that goes over the nylon cover I decided to get the cover on cover because I am actually the kind of girl who just um, throws her journal into her bag you have seen my archives you know how they look like they can get pretty dirty and the cover is so pretty I didn't want to make it dirty so I thought that having this cover and cover would help protect it and preserve it because it's really pretty you guys it's really so pretty and now let us put the notebook together I'm just going to be copying the way all the rest of you did it um, for your planners when you were setting up your Hobonichis. First I put the cover on cover and the cover together first without the notebook and um, the cover is not really really very stiff but it's not very soft either it's just the right amount of stiffness so that I can still manipulate it without it losing its shape and now let us take the notebook out. This would be it. It's the Midori MD A5 notebook and I've already started journaling in it. As you can see that's how it looks like once I have completed a page. As you can see it is exactly a personal sized area that I am using well within the parameters that I have set on the template. So the secret to, to putting on the Hobonichi cover properly is to take the front and the back cover of the um, actual notebook and then um, fold them way back out so that they're back to back together and then fold the covers in such a way that the slots are you know held against the edges of the front and back covers of the notebook that you are already holding together. I'm grateful that I have a video on because if you were not watching the video and you were just listening to me explain how I did it you would not understand what I was saying. And so that's it. Easy peasy. It's just a matter now of tucking in that yellow bookmark that came with a Midori notebook which I don't really need anymore and then placing those two Hobonichi bookmarks where I wanted them. I actually don't need two bookmarks because I don't use this as a planner. I'm going to use this as a journal so I only need one. As you can see I haven't really finished putting in the crop marks on all of the pages but I finished half 
more or less, I think. So I put one bookmark where I have to resume putting in the crop marks. And then I put another bookmark in the page where I can resume writing into my journal. And that is it. It kind of made the Midori MD notebook um, a little bit bulkier and a little bit bigger because the covers extend the nylon cover, the blue one, extends way beyond the um, dimensions of the notebook. And the cover on cover extends that a few millimeters more. So the notebook will end up becoming bigger. I was, I was pretty aware of that. I mean, there is no other way you can cover that notebook without making it bigger than what it actually is. But I like it. It's very, very pretty. I think I made the right decision in choosing that cover for a first Hobonichi cover. I have been using a bound journal and planner for a while in 2006-2007. Um, you've seen my archives and you've even seen a flip a throwback flip through from 2006 of one of my planners from 2006. Um, so I really like the bound system but my life is too complicated right now. And it's really, really more convenient and just easier to go with a loose leaf ring bound system. But for journaling, which I don't need to be using loose leaves for, I can use this one instead. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So here is a flip through of the pages that I have written on so far. And it looks like I'm writing with very, very large margins, but you already know why I'm doing it this way. And that is how I am finally using my Midori MDA5 notebook. I like it. I really, really do. And having this Hobonichi cover and cover on cover just makes things even more pleasant to use. Now I feel like a young girl that's so carefree that I can take just this journal and a pen and run off into the garden and sit under a tree and journal for hours. <laughs> and I hope that one of these days I can actually go ahead and do that. And that's my video for today. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.